بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد In this world of deception we need to see where the opportunity controls us and decide what our loyalties and where does our loyalty lie. When a person is put in a position of compromise they tend to give preference to where their heart lies. We need to see, is Deen my priority or Dunya my priority? Is Dunya my priority or Akhirat my priority? Is Allah and His Rasul my priority or something else? Also, the fact that we are acquainted with Ulama'i Haq, Ulama'i Rabbaniyin to get Ilm and knowledge and the correct knowledge is a great bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So many people who have been favored with Islam are not affiliated with the correct information, people, surroundings, etc. which is to their detriment. So this is a great bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should not get caught out in this short life of us on earth. Otherwise there are different schemes, plans, plottings, deceptions, which is out there to trap in sun. The deception of the world where they run a scheme to rob you of your money is a small deception compared to the great deception of Iblis and Shaitan where a person is robbed of his akhirah. A person not only loses Jannah, a great treasure, but there is torment and destruction that faces a person who does not go to Jannah. We were traveling in one country and we came across a person, we gave them some targhib, with regards to compromise and our loyalties. So, after the conversation, he explained, he said, in that area, a certain group of ladies got together and decided they need to make it big. So they started recruiting girls that were of, who were bestowed with beauty were endowed with a Jamal and the plan was to recruit these girls and train them to be experts in enticing men. So they would recruit the girls and these were normal average whether they were working as normal people or they were students or wherever it was in whichever sector they were in. The idea was to headhunt the best bombshell. Then came the training. Then they would identify key people in certain positions, whether it was in companies, whether it was in government. And after in, uh, identifying these people, they identified their movement patterns then these girls were placed in their paths and obviously men in his weakness and nisa wa habailu shaytan that if a man had to fall first and fast would be for a woman so they fell for the plan then it was to entice them to get them in a position of compromise and in that room they would have cameras placed in strategic positions. Then after that they would be blackmailed. That this footage would be released if you don't give us so much amount of money. Likewise if they needed certain work done, certain government tenders, they would use this footage to extort these men. And that's how it continued. So the story is quite interesting because at the end, I'm not going to get into detail, 
But when this syndicate grew so big and grew so powerful, they didn't realize that the men they were enticing were also quite powerful. So one day they decided these men realized there were other people, influential people that were involved. And they recruited every department, whether it was the military, whether it was the police, whether it was whatever context they had. And they got all, this whole syndicate, every girl arrested. And their fate, especially in that country, was quite disastrous. So two lessons. One is we don't know if we play in, because it meant also, oh, wow, I'm in the golden seat. I mean, the ballpark, I got it made. So normally, each person knows what they made up of, but I got it right. How did I get it right? Brilliant. You got it wrong. She got you. And secondly, is they thought so. They were, uh, they, these girls thought so that they would not be caught out. And they got it under control. And they were oblivious of the fact that the good life would come to an end, a better end. So we also should be very careful, be particular, that we don't get caught in the dunyawi lines, nor get caught in the lines of Akhirah. And that is this dunya. So Mashaikh you say, Min aibi dunya anha la tu'thi ahdan ma yastahikku lakinha. This dunya is such, it does not give you its worth. Imma an tazid wa imma an tanqus. Some people who don't deserve it, it gives them more. Those that deserve it, it gives them less. If we look at the logical explanation, a person who is an expert, a, a master in a certain field, he's just getting his salary. And you see other people who are mentally incompetent. and they So the dunya doesn't have a fixed system. There's no law to crack the formula. Sufyan Thawri, Rahmatullah, say, أَمَا تَرَى النِّعَمْ كَأَنَّهَا مَغْضُوبٌ عَلَيْهَا don't you see all these bounties that are spread out as if it is cursed because قَدْ وُضِعَتْ فِي غَيْرِ أَهْلِهَا It has been placed in avenues with people that don't even deserve it. With people that don't deserve it. As Abu Suleyman Darani Rahmatullah say, مَنْ طَلَبَ الدُّنْيَا عَلَى الْمَحَبَّ لَهَا لَمْ يُؤْتِ مِنْهَا شَيْئًا that whoever seeks dunya because of his engrossment and engagement and love for dunya, he will only get a, stimu a stipulated, a very limited amount. Although he wants more, then whatever he desires, he's not going to get his desire. وَمَنْ ثَلَبَ الْآخِرَ عَلَى الْمَحَبَّ لَهَا لَمْ يُؤْتِي مِنْهَا شَيْئًا And whoever's desire and ambition is akhirat because of his love for akhirat then he will be given not that what he wants but he will give in, be given more than what he wants so if we become seekers of dunya we're not going to get what we want but if we become seekers of akhirat we'll not only get what we wanted but more than what we wanted and even what we wanted we will get better than our imagination Al-Zad Mu'az Yahya bin Mu'az Al-Razi Rahmatullah he say Ad-Dunya Hanutu Shaytan What is the reality of this dunya? It is a shop of shaitan and it has the goods of shaitan فَلَا تَسْرِقْ مِنْ حَانُوتِهِ شَيْئًا Don't ever steal from shaitan, from his shop. فَيَجِئْ فِي طَلَبِهِ Because shaitan is going to come back and claim his assets, his goods, his commodities. So don't get caught. Your shop is akhirat. Your business is the business of akhirat. هَلْ أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَى تِجَارَةٍ 
tunjikum min adabin alim that for el bin fadl bin ayaz rahl alayhi say law kanat ad dunya min dhahabin yafna wal akhira min khazafin yabqa that if dunya was made of gold that perished and vanished and akhirat was made of clay pot earthenware that remained لكان ينبغي لنا أن نختار خزفا يبقى على ذهب يفنى. Wise and intelligent would be the person, and it would be necessary to choose the stone where the earthen where the clay pot instead of the gold that will be one day terminating. فكيف he says. وَقَدْ يَخْتَرْنَا خَزَفًا يَفْنَا عَلَى ذَهَبٍ يَبْقَى That how come we have opted for clay way that terminates is referring to the dunya it's earthen way that's gonna come to an end عَلَى ذَهَبٍ يَبْقَى for that gold of the akhirat that's gonna remain eternal. So, actually, dunya will come to an end. It's not even worth earthenware. And that's why dunya has entered the hearts of people so much that even in any situation, it surfaces and it shows how much of the love of dunya a person has. The a Jewish person was knocked down by a car, so the paramedic put him onto the stretcher and just checking on him said are you comfortable so he replied I make a good living don't worry I make a good living you have dying but where did your thought go to where did your thought go to so that's love of dunya as your grandmother was playing in the park with her two small children when one of our old acquaintances came appeared so after they met each other exchanged greetings then the friend asked her, and these must be your grandchildren. How old are they? And these must be your grandchildren. How old are they? So the grandmother said, well, the doctor is four years old and the lawyer too. The doctor is four years old and the lawyer too. Referring to her grandchildren, she already planned out what achievements in the worldly terms they will achieve so we are thinking far ahead with regards to dunya am i thinking pondering striving making more effort with regards to akhirah so generally if a person is in dunya then anything connected to dunya will get him worried whereas things for a believer, things with regards to Akhirat should get him worried. So they say that uh, a person's wife, she seen the husband and she seen him that he was very worried about something and he wasn't sleeping at night and he'd lost his appetite and all the time, perpetually, permanently, he looked very anxious. So she asked her husband, that, oh, my dear husband, what's wrong? So he said, you know what, it's so bad, I can't even tell you. He said, you know, I'm not in the habit of owing money, but my friend, Mr. X, I borrowed some money from him and I owe him, and the date I've stipulated, I can't pay him back. I don't have the guts to tell him that I don't have the money. So that has made me lose my sleep. So the wife said, no problem. Why don't you just give him a call? Why don't you just give him a call and tell him that you can't pay him back? Tell him, you can't pay him back. Then he'll do the warring and you will do the sleeping. Then he'll do the warring and you will do the sleeping. So Dunya, on both sides of the end, people are crying both sides of the end people are crying in Jannat both sides will be happy 
innal muttaqin fi jannati uyun the pious people will be in enjoyment they'll be in merry making they'll be in bliss so let us not caught, get caught in this dunya that we are so engaged in dunya nowadays that even the children don't have time for their parents children don't even have any time for their parents they say a father called his son and he said you know what oh my son i'm divorcing your mother so the son got very upset and angry and said you can't dad you've been married for 52 years so the father said sorry son i don't even want to discuss it with you i've made up my mind i've decided and i think so it's time we take our own roots so the son said, okay, can I talk to mom? Can I do something? He said, no, you don't even call her. You don't speak to her. You don't mention anything to her. I'll break the news to her. Tomorrow I'm going to see the attorney. And I will discuss it with the attorney. So the son couldn't believe what he was hearing. And he said, okay, father, don't do anything rational. I'm going to catch the first flight down. And I will be, both be with you as soon as I can. So let us talk about this. Let it be as a family. Before you initiate the procedures and start petitioning and getting the formalities in place, um, please, Dad. So he played hard and he said, okay, okay, no problem. I'll postpone the lawyer's meeting for a day or two. But if you are coming down, can you call your sister? So he said, you know what, she's somewhere else in the world and I don't know if she'll come. He said, okay, no problem. But he said, you know what, there's nobody else I can speak to. If your sister's there, it'll help. So after about half an hour, the son phones back and he tells dad, you know what, um, sister is in and she's going to catch the first flight. We've synchronized our flight and we'll be there at the same time. We'll be there tomorrow at this time. So he said, make sure she doesn't tell your mom anything. So he said, no, I made a promise not to tell mom anything, but please don't be hasty. So the father said, okay, I won't be hasty. And he put the phone down. Then he turned to his wife and he said, well, I got to give it to you. It worked this time. It worked this time. But what are we going to do to get them down here next year? What are we going to do to get them down next year? So even parents to see their own children need to play games. Otherwise, nowadays, the kids don't even have time for their parents. In the olden days, it was when they grow up, they got big, they got married, they got their jobs, professions, and they moved on with life. Now parents don't even see their kids when they're at home. So the love of dunya is so much that it has overwhelmed us. When we're not even supposed to think of dunya, we are think about it, even in the worst moments. So see, her husband was uh, teaching his wife driving lessons, how to drive. He wanted to save money, so he said, I'll teach you. So on the first outing, everything was going fine, and then they reached a cliff on top, and they were going down the hill, and suddenly the car veered out of control and just speeding down the incline. So the wife screamed, the brakes aren't working, the brakes aren't working. So he said, put your foot on the pedal. She put it on the pedal, it was flat. And she said, it's still not working. He said, okay, use the handbrakes. So the wife grabbed onto the handbrakes and tried to pull it. As she pulled it hard, it snapped out. And down the hill, there was a row of cars parked in front. So she screamed to the husband, what should I do now? What should I do now? She was in a panic stream. So the husband, also in a panic, said, okay, wife, just make sure you hit something cheap. Just make sure you hit something cheap. So Dunya, even in a situation where there's destruction and death, we're trying to save money we try to save money may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the reality may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us to to utilize our time 
in this amanat of life properly wa akhiru dawana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin